Turn uh, in your Bibles, if you will, to Ephesians chapter 6 this morning. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6. Come back to a familiar passage of Scripture. Ephesians chapter 6, uh, starting down in verse 10. Finally, my brethren, uh, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against uh, flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, uh, wherewith ye should be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, which is the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Um, I, before we get any further, and I give you the title, let's go ahead and bow for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you again on a Sunday morning. Uh, certainly are happy to be able to be here. It is a blessing that we have the freedom and the liberty and, uh, Lord, even the weather uh, to be able to show up on a Sunday morning, sing praises to our God, to lift up our voice unto thee. Pray that you might uh, just set aside the cares of the world for a little while as we concentrate on the Word of God. Pray that you might touch uh, each and every one of our hearts. Father, we all need something. Uh, we all have a, a will uh, in, that you have for us, and I pray that you might show it to us. Pray that you might bless uh, the rest of the morning, keep everyone safe here during the week. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, the verse starts off in Ephesians uh, 6, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his, of his might. Um, and I, I titled this message, kind of a, a weird title, but I titled this message, uh, To Be or Not To Be. <laughs> yes, that is the question. <laughs> now, I'm not uh, a really big Shakespeare kind of guy. Uh, but in the play Hamlet, uh, the ghost of uh, the king of Denmark comes back and tells his son, Hamlet, to avenge his murder uh, by killing the new king, uh, Hamlet's uncle. No, this is not a political message. <laughs> um, Hamlet, Hamlet uh, fakes you know, madness, and he, he contemplates life and death uh, as he goes about to seek revenge. Uh, his uncle, the new king, fearing for his life, uh, he also devises a plot to kill Hamlet. <clears throat> uh, the play ends in a, in a duel uh, during which uh, the king, the queen, Hamlet, and his opponent uh, are all killed. Very uplifting kind of a thing. <laughs> in other words, uh, royal politics as usual. <laughs> Hamlet wonders... If, uh, if life is worth living uh, with all of its pain and suffering, but he also worries about death, and he, he wonders if death might even be worse. And it, it is in that contemplation that he asks the question, to be or not to be, uh, and I'm by no means a poet, but he says, to be or not to be, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles, and by opposing in them, to die, to sleep, no more. And by a sleep, to say we in the heartache, and a thousand natural shocks that the flesh is heir to. Wow. <laughs> now, Hamlet, of course, is not a real guy. <laughs> it's nothing but a character in a play that Shakespeare wrote, right? Uh, but there's a hint of truth in the storyline. I mean, like most works of men, it's, it came in part from experience. It came in part from imagination. Um, the plot does sound awful familiar to what we read about last week in the books of Kings, doesn't it? <laughs> one king killing another one, somebody seeking revenge, and uh, some things never change. Um, and he tries to murder and overtake the throne. Uh, of course, the play would have been much better if uh, a Bible-believing preacher and a bunch of uh, Christians had come on the scene and started witnessing to everyone, amen? amen? Then everyone would have gotten saved and hopefully everyone would have not died in the way that they died. 
Uh, Hamlet would not have had to contemplate death, and he wouldn't have had to wonder whether death is better than life. He would have known. I probably just ruined Hamlet for all of you, <laughs> if there's any Shakespeare fans here. <laughs> but that's okay. Next time you watch it or, or listen to it, I just want you to imagine a bunch of Christians being inserted into the play, and I want you to see them witnessing to everybody in the play and everybody getting saved and living happily ever after. <laughs> Amen? I don't know if any of you kids are having to read that in school, but if you do, I'm sorry. <laughs> but Hamlet does ask uh, a, a good question, right? To be or, or not to be. Uh, and I was looking at uh, Ephesians 6 this morning, and, or not this morning, but, but here, and that, uh, that question entered my mind. It said, finally, my brethren, it says, be strong, right? So I found, uh, you know, three things that we will either be or we won't be. Three things that will be or we won't be. And this morning, I want you to consider what you should be. Not in the sense of death, but in the sense of living in this life. The first thing, obviously, is found in uh, uh, chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong. Amen? One of the first things that you and I ought to be, and we have a choice to be or not to be, but as Christians, as Christians, one of the first things we ought to be is we ought to be strong. Uh, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You and I are pretty much all that stands between you know, a, a complete chaos in the world and there being at least some yet that still have the possibility of being redeemed, finding salvation, you and I need to make sure that we stay strong. Amen? Uh, first thing, obviously, is we need to stay strong in the Lord. That's what Ephesians 6.10 says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Uh, Psalm 82, I'm sorry, Psalm 18.2 says this, it says, the Lord is my rock. These are all things we know, they come off the, the tip of our tongue, they are, they're the backbone of who we are. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength. Amen? And whom I will trust, my buckler, that's a, a shield, and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. Um, because we know our strength ultimately comes from the Lord. Amen? Uh, everything we have, everything we are, uh, if there be any good at all in any of those things, they've come from the blessings of God. Amen? Now, maybe the Lord gave you the strength to earn it, but he still gave you that strength. Amen. Maybe he gave you the wisdom to acquire it, but he still gave you that wisdom. Uh, everything, brethren, is still from the Lord. Lost heathen receive blessings from the Lord. Doesn't the Bible say it rains on the just and the unjust? <laughs> Amen? Um, so when, when we Christians, we talk about the strength, we always, we always know and we take it for granted, and I'm not trying to suggest anything else, that the strength that we have, the strength that is ours, is ultimately uh, from the Lord. Moses, uh, you know, Moses is, is singing back in Exodus chapter 15. Uh, and he says, uh, the Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him an, an habitation, my father's God, and I will exalt him. This is, this is Moses uh, speaking about God. Down in, in uh, verse 13, he says this. In speaking about the people, he says, thou in mercy hast led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength. Right? I mean, the strength that we have, ladies and gentlemen, comes from the Lord. And as Christians, we ought never to forget that. It is, uh, it is critical that we, that we keep that in the back of our mind. We need to be strong in the Lord. Amen? Um, but beyond that, brethren, we need to be strong in the battle. Um, turn, turn with me, if you will, to Joshua chapter 14. Joshua chapter 14. What are we talking about? We're talking about to be or not to be. And one of the things that you and I need to be is, is strong. Amen. We get our strength from the Lord. But in Joshua chapter 14, uh, take a look down at uh, verse 7. <clears throat> this is Caleb, uh, and he's asking for a mountain. You probably remember the story. In, in verse 7, Caleb uh, rehearses this to, uh, to Joshua. He says, 40 years old was I 
when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land, and I brought him word again, as was in mine heart. You uh, go down a little bit in verse 10, it says this, and now, uh, Caleb says, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these 40 and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, and when the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. As yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now. For war, both to go out and to come in. Listen, there's something... Of, there's something uh, to be said for being strong for battle. Amen? I know our strength comes from the Lord, but here's, uh, here's Caleb, and he's 85 years old, and he's telling Joshua, he says, listen, Joshua, I'm as strong now as I was 45 years ago. I can go out to war. Listen, let me have that mountain. It was promised to me. The Lord said I could have it. Moses said I could have it. Let me have that mountain. Joshua's ready to go. Amen? 85, 85 years old. Now, there's this dude here, <laughs> Olsky uh, Novikov. He's a Ukrainian. He just, uh, he just got the title in 2020 of the world's uh, strongest man. He's lifting, uh, lifting 1,185 pounds in a deadlift. Brother Mike, that's a deadlift. <laughs> All right? That is, uh, that's a strong man. He was, uh, he's been the winner of Ukraine's Strongest Man uh, every year from 2016 to 2019. Uh, he moved on to the international stage in 2019. He finished 38th place in the Strong, uh, strong Man Championship uh, last year. In May of 2020, he took, uh, uh, he took part in the first season's World Ultimate Strong Man's uh, Feast of Strength. And a, a giant dumbbell deadlift, he, rec he did 11 reps. Apparently, that's a new world record. In 2020, uh, November, he won the world's strongest uh, man competition in uh, uh, Bradenton, Florida, to become the second man to win that award who was 24 years old. This guy is 24 years old. And part of what helped him to, uh, to win that is this, this deadlift right here. Now... I know what some of you Bible believers are thinking. You're thinking Psalm 147 10. He delighteth not in the strength of a horse. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. <laughs> Amen. But nonetheless, you got to admit, that's a pretty strong dude. Right? Uh, but you know what I love? I love an 85 year old man who's still serving the Lord. His strength is for battle to go take that mountain for the Lord Jesus Christ, Caleb. If the Lord tarries uh, this long, and I pray that he doesn't, but if he does tarry this long, uh, I pray that when I get to be up around 80 years old, I'm in company, and I, I don't mean to embarrass them, but I will anyway. Uh, I hope I'm in company with, with uh, sisters and brothers like uh, Sister Melva Jane, Brother Dan. Sister Bella Jane amazes me. I'm sorry, I don't mean to embarrass her or lift her up, but I mean, her, her Bible reading and reading her Bible consistently, 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 and she's 88 years old. That's awesome. Brethren, that's strength. Amen? I want to be strong in battle for the Lord if the Lord tarries that long. Amen? I want to be strong in the Lord. I want to be strong in battle and brethren, listen, turn, turn to Acts chapter 9, if you will. Acts chapter 9. I want to be strong. I want to be strong in the Bible. I know the Lord gives us a strength, but man, I want to use that strength in the battle. I want to use that strength in the Bible. Look at Acts chapter 9. Uh, take a look down at verse 13. And this is Paul uh, after his conversion here. Ananias uh, answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call upon thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. 
For I will show him how great things he must, he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received a sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. Um, <clears throat> and when he, had, uh, when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. Straightway he preached in the synagogues that he is the son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which calleth on this name in Jerusalem and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, at Damascus proving that this is the very Christ. Here's a man... Here's a man that uh, obviously the Lord got a hold of him on the way to Damascus. Here's a man that was, uh, that was raised in church, so to speak. And, you know, he was, he was on his own road, uh, on his way to Damascus, actually fighting against the Lord and didn't even realize it. And the Lord reached down and struck this apostle, uh, this, this man, and turned him into an apostle. The Lord, you know, the Lord, the Lord took this man and then Paul, after he's saved, he goes into the synagogues. And what's he doing? He's arguing Bible, Bible, Bible. And, and once the Lord finally convinces him that he is really God, Paul takes up that banner and, man, he charges with it. Right? He got, he's got that Bible in him and he gets a hold of who Jesus Christ really was and the apostle, he becomes the apostle Paul. And, and Paul just, he, he charges forward and and brethren, he takes that Bible and he turns the world upside down. And he's, he's going to the Jews, right? He's taking the Jewish Bible, going to the Jewish people and turning their world inside out so much they want to kill him. That's an amazing thing. That's a strength. I want that kind of strength. The time is short. I don't know how much time we have before the Lord comes back here. But brethren, you and I are going to need to be strong in the Lord. That's where we get our strength. We're going to need to be strong for battle. That's obvious, right? And the way we do that is we're going to need to be strong in the Bible. Amen. Amen? We're going to need to be strong in the Bible. Listen, it's the beginning of the year. Uh, and I like to throw this out, uh, you know, uh, as often as I remember to think about it. But I would challenge teens and up, teens and up. Once again, I would give you this challenge. I would like for every one of you to read through your Bible at least once during the course of this year. Amen? A challenge. Listen, from Genesis to Revelation, or if you want, you can do it like I'm doing it this time. I just finished uh, back in December. I'm going backwards. I'm starting in Revelation. I'm going to work my way back to Genesis. <laughs> Why? I don't know. <laughs> I did it once before. I'll do it again. I just, just break up the monotony. I just wanted to read backwards again. But read through the whole Bible. I mean, I'm not starting in Genesis 22 and working chapter, I'm book by book, right? <laughs> Start in Revelation 1 and read the whole book and then go back to 3 John and then, you know, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, actually. But, but, um, uh, but I'm reading mine backwards just for the fun of it. Um, but I, I challenge you, folks. I, I challenge you to take your Bible and read your Bible. What are we after? We're after being strong in the Lord. That's where we get our strength. Right? Why? Because we're going to need to battle and be strong in your Bible. You're not going to be strong in your Bible if you don't read your Bible. You know, don't worry about the parts you don't understand. Don't worry about the words you can't pronounce. Don't worry about the names that are Ukrainian and you can't figure out how to pronounce them either. Just, just read it and do the best you can and just plug along, plug along, plug along. Try to get in, you know, three or four, maybe five pages a day. If you can do that, you know, I like the way that Brother Gip or some of the other people do. They go, that's it right there. One, two, three, four, five. Two and a half physical pages of paper a day. If you do that, 
If you do that, chances are pretty good. I don't know how many pages in your Bible, but there's usually around 1,500. If you do that, just two and a half pages a day, two and a half physical pages, five written pages, you can read your Bible through in, the whole, in one year. Just by taking a few minutes a day to do that. Brethren, read your Bible. Why? It strengthens you. All right? Uh, Ephesians 6.10, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. What are we after? We're after being, if, if we're not going to, if Bible believing Christians aren't going to be strong in the Lord, who's going to be? If we're not the ones reading our Bible, who's going to read it? Right? It's, 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 it really is more and more as time goes on, it's on our shoulders to be the Bible literate ones. More and more people need it now than ever. More and more people need you to be in your Bible, to read it through so that you're familiar with the stories. You can, you can take this passage and compare it with this passage you read last month and, and line upon line, precept upon precept, and you put things together and, and you begin to, to get an overall picture and a flow of how the Bible goes. And people begin to ask you questions that you couldn't answer before. And now, oh yeah, I, I remember that back here. And maybe you have to get on your computer and look it up. That's okay. I do that all the time. But at least you know what's there. You know where to go look for it. Amen? Read our Bible. What are we after? We're, we're after being strong. To be or not to be. You can either be strong or you can not be strong. That strength from, comes from the Lord. That strength is used for battle. And that strength comes from being in your Bible. Amen? Caleb stands up at 85 years old and says, I'm as strong to Day, as I was way back then 85 years old Josh, Joshua just give me the word let me go take that mountain I know, there, I know that it was much easier to read your Bible back in his day there was only a few books probably written <laughs> but you know that he studied that law you know he had that in his heart he, he had to have you don't get to be strong like that without that book. And we call ourselves Bible-believing Christians, right? Amen. And that's a, that's a great title. It's a great title to have. I am, I am thrilled to be a part of that group. But it also brings a great responsibility. Because when someone wants answers, where do they go? Well, you would think to Bible-believing Christians. Well, what if we don't know the answer? Right? I know there's some things that no one has figured out yet. I'm not talking about those things. I'm talking about read your Bible. Teens, you guys are old enough. Read, try to read your Bible through. 2021, 20, if you've never done it before. If, adults, too. If you've never read your Bible through before, listen, I would encourage you, this year, make it the first year that you are on track to read your Bible through in one complete year. And if the Lord comes back early and stops you in, you know, Exodus or, or Joshua or 2 Chronicles, great. But if he tarries by the end of the year, read your Bible through at least once. Amen? Um, you'll be surprised what it would do. It's not as difficult as you think. Um, I know some people... And I'm one of them. Reading is not my thing. Right? Get me out there, put my hands on it, and let's work on something. I'm, I'm perfectly content and happy with that. I now have to sit behind a desk. <laughs> we knew uh, Miss Judy was coming over last night. And she walks up, and I'm sitting in the, in the office. Next thing I know, there's this tap on my window. And where am I? At my desk. <laughs> I sit down way too much at the desk. But that's what the Lord's called me to do. But he's called all of us to read. You don't have to stay at the desk for that long to read your Bible through in a year. Amen? Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the battle. Be strong in the Bible. Listen, here's the cycle that, that life goes through. Hard times create strong men. Amen? Amen? Strong men create good times. 
Good times create weak men. Weak men create hard times. That's the cycle, brethren. That's the cycle. You look at that thing. A hard times create strong men. That authoritarian thing that everybody hates. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. Things become more liberal. Weak men create hard times. We're probably in the cycle of weak men creating hard times. Amen? I don't want to be there. I don't want to be a part of the problem. Let me put it that way. Strong, strong. Be strong in the Lord. To make things clear, just uh, in case anyone may have a misunderstanding, uh, the situations that you're in occasions do not make a man either strong or weak. They just show what you are. Amen? Amen. You and I are called to be strong regardless of what the rest of the world does. Amen. Be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. To be or not to be, that's the question. Be strong or not to be strong. But it's not enough to be just strong. You need to be armored. Amen? Amen? Put on the whole armor of God. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Of God. Wow. Now that's something, that, that's a suit. <laughs> How'd you like to have to put that on to go to work every day? <laughs> All right, we know the passage, we know the, the you know, the, the, uh, you know, the, the scripture. Let me get, I'm in 1 Corinthians, how I manage to get in Corinthians, I don't know. Let me find uh, Ephesians. I know it's in my Bible somewhere. There it is. Uh, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Listen, you need to put on that whole armor, right? Amen. Now, you can be strong, but you also need to be armored. Here's where reading your Bible comes in. Here's where living right comes in. Here's where doing all those things for the Lord Jesus Christ comes into play. Listen, you need to be armored. You need to put that, that thing on. It says, it says in, um, in verse 14, truth. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. That's armor you put on. Amen? That's armor you put on. The Bible says in John 17, it says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. All right? So uh, the Lord gives you strength. You develop strength. You read your Bible. And, and now you've got to put this armor on. And brethren, why? Because the devil's coming at you. But listen, we know that our fight is not with flesh and blood. Amen. Right? It doesn't really matter if you can, bet, if you can deadlift 1,185 pounds. As impressive as that may be, our battle is not really with flesh and blood. Amen. Our battle that we're battling in this country, in this globe, in this world is spiritual. And everything that we're going to see happening in this globe is a spiritual battle. We know the Antichrist is coming. We know the devil's in charge. We know that he's the God of this world. We know that... that Everything that goes on in this world is going to conform to the, the prophetical things the Bible has said and that, yes, the Antichrist is going to come in, take over, and that can't be changed. We're not fighting a physical fight. In a lot of cases, that's much easier to fight. Right? You see somebody, they got a uniform on, wrong color, bang, they're dead. Or they shoot you and you're dead. Problem solved, done. That's not what we're fighting. We're fighting a spiritual battle. Amen. You can't see it as easy. You get caught up in all the details and we forget it's a spiritual battle. I mean, we know that in the back of our head. But our job is to, to be strong and our job is to put on that armor. Why? Because as, as Christians, brethren, these last days especially, we're going to have to take a stand. And we take that stand by following and going after the truth. Take a look at verse 14 again in Ephesians 6. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. What is this about? This is the armor. 
These are the things that, that comprise together that make up my armor so that I can just stand against the wiles of the devil, knowing the battle that I'm fighting. Uh, Romans 6.18 says this. It says, being then made free from sin, if you're born again, if you trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, guess what? You've been made free from sin, right? Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Listen, when we got saved, when we got saved, the Lord, we know this, the Lord took the blood that he shed on Calvary's cross and he washed our sins away and our, our slate is clean white, white as snow. And in his eyes, we are sinless. We're forgiven, right? In his eyes, we're perfect. I know that's hard to believe looking at us, but in his eyes, we're perfect because the price has already been paid. And what he expects out of us, what he, what he wants from us, that put that armor on to get ready to fight, to give it, he gives us that strength. We get this armor put on. And, and one of the things that we put on, brethren, is we put on righteousness, right? We just strive to do right Amen. not necessarily what feels good not necessarily what I would like to do not necessarily what somebody else may even deserve but righteousness I put on this armor and the Lord expects of me because he saved my soul because he paid the price for my sins on that cross he desires that, that since I've been made free from sin, that I become the servant of righteousness. Amen. And what is that? That's part of my armor. That's part of what helps make me stand. Amen? That's, that's a, a critical component. Uh, listen, the Lord, the Lord uh, in this Ephesians 6, take a look at verse 15. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now there's a lot of different directions you can go with that. But you know what part of your armor is, brethren? Part of the armor that you and I have is this peace. When the world falls apart, when the world goes crazy, I know what's going on. I know that I'm not battling against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. I know what's going on. And because of that, brethren, I have peace. That peace is, is something that is part of your armor that protects you. If that's missing, you're missing part of your uniform. Right? To be or not to be. I can be armored or I can not be armored. Right? That's the question. If I'm going to be armored, part of that armor is having peace. Even while the world goes crazy. Therefore, being justified by faith, which I am. When I got saved, I got justified by faith. My, I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And I received atonement for my sins because of what Jesus Christ did for me. Not because of how good I was. I trusted him. And when I did that, he took that blood and washed away my sins. And brethren, he justified me. He made me just according to his law. And because of that, he gave me a peace. And that peace, brethren, is, a, is I mean, that peace deflects. It deflects the, the fiery darts of the wicked. It deflects the attacks of the enemy. Peace. These are all just little pieces of the armor that we have to think. Um, faith. Look at verse 16. And above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You know, it's awful tough to, to be in the situation that we're in a lot of times in a, in a country and to have much faith. I don't have any faith in the world system. But I certainly do have faith in God's. Amen? And I gotta, I gotta keep that distinction. I see everything around me that I don't have faith in. I just gotta remind myself, hey, listen, I don't have faith in that anyway. I'm not counting on that to save me anyway. I'm, I know where that part's going. I, I have peace about that. And I certainly do not have faith in that. But I have faith in the Lord. I know what he's doing. Right? I know where the Lord's going with this whole thing. 
And because I know where the Lord's going with this whole thing, I can have faith that he's doing it right. I may not like the process. But brethren, I have, I have faith. He, uh, Hebrews 11.6, you know the verse. But without faith, it is what? Impossible to please him. If you and I are fighting this battle as born-again, Bible-believing Christians, and we don't have that faith in God, listen, we can't be pleasing unto God. We take that armor, that armor protects us, that armor is designed and, and, and given to us so that we can stand and fight in the evil day and, and you know, take care of the fiery darts of the devil. If you start taking a piece off here, a piece off there, a piece, guess where the enemy is going to attack? Right? The enemy attacks where you're not armored. I mean, any enemy knows that. I'm not going to take my sword and bang it against your steel plate. I'm going to find the place that's exposed. Right? So any, as a, as a Christian, anytime we drop any one of these pieces of armor, basically it's, it's taking that, that piece off and we're leaving ourselves exposed. And one of the things that the Lord's given me to stand, withstand the fiery darts of the devil is faith. Another one, salvation, verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation. Right? Amen. First Thessalonians 5, 9 says this, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, famous verse, we like that verse, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. And why do you think he gave us that salvation? That's part of our armor. We're, we're eternally secure, like nobody else has ever been. I can rely on that. I can have faith in that. I can have peace because of that. I have strength because of that. I'm following after truth. I'm trying to keep myself in the path of righteousness. All those things put together, listen, they make me, they make me a formidable opponent for the adversary. And I can make an impact on a lost world that's around me. They don't know what's going on, but I do. Amen? To be or not to be. Finally, the sword of the Spirit. Verse 17, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. There we have it again. We've already talked about it. I won't, I won't uh, you know, go on and on and on, but... Uh, but Hebrews 4.12 says the word of God is quick, it's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That word of God, brethren, the reason, you know, <laughs> you know why a lot of people, maybe not you, you know why a lot of people resist reading their Bible through? Because that book is alive. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That means when you read that book, it reads you. Uh, you just got to get over it. <laughs> you just got to accept who you are. And if you don't like it, change it the best you can. Ask the Lord for help. But let that book read you. Why? It's God. God. That's God's words. I mean, he's the God. Jesus Christ is the word, right? The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus Christ is the word of God, capital W. That book reads us. When we read it, that's why it's so difficult. You got the spiritual battle going on. You have the devil who doesn't want you to read it. You got the fiery darts and you got everything going on. And then you begin to read this passage and it's, you know, maybe less than flattering. <laughs> and, and it gets discouraging occasionally. But man, I tell you what, if you keep reading it, if you keep reading it and keep reading it and fight through the boring parts, all the names that you can't pronounce, <laughs> right? Fight through the parts that are, are less flattering than you would like them to be. Brethren, I promise you, you will get to the parts that you'll wake up one morning and you'll read a passage of scripture in there that's in your daily Bible reading. And that'll be exactly what you need to encourage you and get you through the day. You say, oh, I want only that. Well, that's great. I, I bet you never want your husband or wife to be upset with you either. How often does that happen? Where everything is perfect. It, it doesn't. The Bible's the same way. Some days you read it and you go, oh, that's me. Some days you read it and you go, oh, thanks, Lord. That's great. I needed that. Amen? But you don't get that if you don't read it. 
That book's a, a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Armor. To be or not to be. We're supposed to be or not to be strong. We should be strong. But we're supposed to be armored. All those things should be a regular part of, of who we are, be our makeup. Why? Because I know what battle we're fighting. And if I'm not prepared, I'm not going to do so well in the battle. Now, I don't know. I was thinking about it, and I kind of like to imagine the armor like this. That's kind of cool. <laughs> I'll take that. I'm not sure I want to be the bomb squad guy, but... <laughs> But put on the whole armor of God. Finally, to be or not to be, to be or not to be strong, to be or not to be armored. That's what we're facing. That's our question, right? Finally, to be or not to be prayerful. Ephesians 6, 18, the Bible says this. It says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. To be or not to be prayerful. Amen? Amen. That's, what we're, that's what you and I are, are, that's the decision you and I have to make. Perseverance. I, liked, I like this definition of perseverance. Uh, we talk about being prayerful. It says, uh, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance. Perseverance is steady persistence in a course of action. Steady persistence. Now, Brother Matt, you, you'll take this the right way, right? You know what I mean when I say this. I hate you. <laughs> He's doing this prayer stuff on with men's prayer meeting, and every time we go, I get under conviction. <laughs> I love you, brother. I do. I, I love it. It's great. I need it. I need it. Pr prayer, I mean, steady persistence in a course of action, especially in spite of difficulties or obstacles or discouragement. Perseverance. The, the verse says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. That perseverance is steady persistence in a course of action, especially in spite of difficulties, obstacles, and discouragement. For me to be persistent in prayer for all the saints, I've got to have a steady course of action in spite, in spite of difficulties, obstacles, and discouragement. And you know what gets us down a lot of times? Discouragement. We see th things going on around us and we have a tendency to, to get discouraged. And when we get discouraged, we back away. Right? Listen, we're, we're called... And the Lord has a, a task for us. And we're talking today about to be or not to be. And this topic is prayerful. This, this item is prayerful. We have a choice to be prayerful or not to be prayerful. And one of the things we need is persistence. Brethren, just keep at it. Amen. Just keep struggling along. Just keep doing the best you can. You say, my prayer life is terrible. Welcome to the club. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever met anybody who thought their prayer life was great. <laughs> but welcome to the club. Why? Because we can always do more. What do, but, but what does the Lord want from you? He just wants you to be persistent. In spite of difficulties, in spite of obstacles, in spite of those days where you're discouraged, just keep at it, just keep at it, just keep at it. Why? Because we're in a place right now, brethren, where we need it. The world needs it. Your brothers and sisters sitting next to you and across the aisle from you today need it. Your family needs it. Just be persistent. Stick with it no matter 
what difficulties arise, no matter what obstacles arise, no matter how discouraged you may get, just keep at it. And maybe on the days when you're discouraged, you pray a little less than on the, on the days when you're encouraged. Okay, welcome to being human. But just keep at it. Amen? Amen. Watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. Supplication is to pray humbly. To make a humble and earnest entreaty or petition. I just need to be persistent in crying out to God and pleading with him for help. For me, for my family, for the church, for my friends, for the country. Just be persistent in, and humble in making an earnest entreaty or petition. To be or not to be. James, another famous verse that we uh, probably can roll off the tip of our tongue. Confess your faults one to another. Pray you one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. One thing I can tell you about prayer, ladies and gentlemen, it avails much. If you'll keep at it, if you'll keep at it, if you'll stay strong, if you'll keep trying to, if you'll keep trying to, um, uh, to be strong, to have your armor on, walk with the Lord, and you keep in prayer, listen, you'll get a lot more done for the Lord than you realize. The Lord took this guy, Saul, of Tarsus, a man who was going about killing Christians, torturing Christians. And he took that man and got into his heart and turned him around. And then he did something with him that was amazing. Listen, he can do the same thing with you and I. Now the beauty of it is, every one of us has a big head start. We're already Bible-believing Christians. Amen? I look out, I know just, every, just about everybody here, maybe some of the younger ones aren't, but about everybody here is saved, born again. Praise the Lord for that. We've got a big head start. But man, the Lord can do something with us if we'll just be effectual and fervent in our prayer. This, this world is going crazy and it needs us to be, it needs us to be strong, armored, and prayerful. Amen? Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for uh, another morning here. Uh, certainly, you're a great, a mighty, and a holy God. Um, Lord, we have a great duty that you have given us as Christians. And this world is in need of Bible-believing Christians that will just continue the course. Father, you, uh, you're a great source of strength. Uh, you've helped us <clears throat> you've helped us to become strong to battle father you've helped us to learn that bible i pray that that would be forever on our minds on our hearts lord i pray that we would put that armor on every day that we get up in the morning and think about it and that we would make uh, those traits a, a natural part of our character and who we are father i pray that uh, that we would be a people of prayer lord you have changed your mind when it comes to individual men and when it comes to nations because people have petitioned you and prayed. Help us, Father, never to forget that we have that access to you because of what Jesus Christ did for us. So help us to be a people of prayer. I ask that you might help us now the rest of the, the day. Bless this uh, invitation. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.